as these guys grew, they accumulated a little, a little bit of wealth. They were able to buy their own boats. And, uh, and uh, all returners, uh, Brother Otis uh, was the commander of uh, the Skipjack Mary at Crosswell. Black captain, black crew. But these, these folks, generally speaking, are the, the exceptions. One who, uh, who wasn't an exception uh, back in the 70s uh, is Wallace Thompson. Uh, most of these guys, uh, oyster was a good way to make, to make a living, and most of these guys made, a, made a, a quite a good living on the water. Uh, most had ha happy endings uh, to the story. One that didn't is Wallace Thompson, who is a uh, Deal Island area uh, oysterman. Became a hired captain, ultimately was able to purchase the skipjack Claude W. Summers. Uh, fixed it up, he was quite handy, able to do his own, his own work, and went to work uh, with, uh, with an, an, an all-black crew, captain and crew, all-black. This was working out of, out of Deal Island. And in the, in the, toward the end of his first season with the Claude W. Summers, uh, he got caught out in a, a wind, a stor stormy weather that built out of the east, uh, fishing out on Tangier Sound. Um, another waterman came by, saw that he was drifting. Push boats not operating, sails were down. He went, he went over to assist. Um, turned out their push boat motor had quit. Uh, tried to take him in tow. Tow line broke. This was a small uh, work boat. Um, neither one of them had a, had a heavy enough line to affect the tow. Uh, so after several unsuccessful events and with continuous building we weather, building seas, uh, he offered to take the crew, put on your life jackets, tra transfer over to my boat, and I'll get you into Crisfield. Uh, you'll have to leave the, uh, the, the boat behind, uh, salvage it later. They refused. He made it into, uh, into, into uh, Deal Island. Chris, no, he made it into Crisfield, reported to the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard went out to, uh, uh, to rescue these guys. They found them sunk in 15 mm. feet in Hover Strait. Mm. The captain crew. The captain and crew, six men, perished on, on that day in March of 1977. Um, all but one of them were kin to, uh, to Thompson Wallace. Um, this was my first painting of, of Black Waterman. I call it in the neighborhood. There is an interesting phenomenon in that you're running your engines at a very low RPM. You can actually talk to each other and understand each other over the engines. And when they're very crowded, they don't talk to each other, everybody, boat to boat. There's, there's no regard for where you came from or your color. And they're always joking with each other because a lot of them have histories that go back a long time. So it's, that's why it's called in the name of the trading mm -hmm. stories. Um, so if you can imagine, you can't see the oysters. They're 20 feet below you. You're using these tongs with the rakes, the heads on the end. Um, to see the body. So you you see them doing this action with these shafts. And what they're doing is fluffing up a grab. That's what it's called. They kind of get this very vacant stare on their face. Like they're not there. It's almost, almost like they're, they're, everybody's gone stupid. Because they're really listening through the tongs and they're trying to see through what they're grabbing up. And then they'll, they'll tighten it right up, which is what he's doing. You can also see his foot's right next to it. And he's, he's He'll hit the pedal and then he'll bring it up and then he'll dump it on the board where it's in color and be there. So he's coaxing oysters, that's the title of that. This gentleman here, uh, George Hot Dog Butler, uh, worked with Danny Ashley, both from Rock Hall. And uh, he's picking razor clams, which are used for crab bait. That's about the only type of clam that's left in the Chesapeake now. And it's backbreaking work here at the board. You're, you're picking, depending how fast the dredge is working, but you're picking all the time. He taught me how to do this. I'm not very good at it, but you're on, I'm on these boats all day. I just don't come out on my own little boat and shoot pictures while the lights go and go home. Brothers, the brother, the Admiral's brother. Chesapeake Bay Foundation has an award that they recognize uh, watermen with over the years, and it's called the Admiral of the Chesapeake. Now, I forget the names of these, the last gentleman that got it. Uh, he was, he worked on skipjacks for a while. He was a cook. Earl White. He, Earl White, that may be it. Yeah, that was, was recent, but he, no, no. he was one of the guys. This painting was done in 08, so it was a while ago. Uh, 
I'm on Geo Island. Well, actually, I'm not on Geo. I'm in Chance. Geo Island's on the other side of the creek. And whenever I head south, I always hit work boat docks because you never know what you're going to see. You never know what people you're going to run into. And I shoot lots and lots of photographs. Well, these two gentlemen were just coming in. They were a little bit leery about me with my camera um, because at the time, I think it was like a, a, a day or two before, you were allowed to use this piece of metal on your dredge. It's called the Devil Diver. It gets a little bit deeper more efficient, but the state limits you on how often you can use this tool. So um, they saw me with my camera in there, again, kind of like the backs to you, and the themselves. And I started talking to them, I put my camera down, and we discovered that we shared a very common, deep-rooted dislike for the Bay Foundation, for the state, <laughs> for the fisheries commissions, and, and after a while we got past the little roughness of being introduced to each other. And I asked if I could take their pictures. This is from one of the pictures that I 